August 16 marked 10 years since the brutal massacre of protesting platinum mine workers in the town of Marikana in South Africa. 34 people were killed and 78 injured when the police opened fire on workers who were demanding a better wage and housing. The massacre was the most obvious sign of how closely the state and the mining industry were linked. South Africa's current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, was then a non-executive director of Lawnmen, which operated the mines. Ten years later, justice has not been delivered for the victims of Malikana. Ambuso Angubane, Deputy General Secretary of the National Union of Metal Workers of South Africa, talks about the case and what has happened to the families of victims ten years later. From the onset, um, it has been a, a very difficult uh, path for, for the widows and the families of those mine workers who were brutally murdered or massacred by, the, by the, the, the government of the ANC, who's supposed to be preserving the democratic principles. Um, because remember that this is the government that would have come into place as a result of being voted by the majority of the working class in this country after we would have uh, for decades been under a part apartheid regime, which was uh, more about endorsing and, and, and dominating through white supremacy in this country. Um, and I must say that um, as Numsa, we had to take a stance um, in 2013 during our special Congress to say what would have um, uh, been uh, uh, said by the Central Committee of NUMSA was correct, that indeed this was a massacre, and therefore we needed an agent intervention on the side of government to try and, uh, and remedy what would, have, what would have happened through its state security organ, which is the SAPS. And, um, and, and in doing so, NUMSA would have done um, limited um, uh, initiative toward also showing cause uh, toward those widows and families where we said in that uh, 2013 uh, NUMSA Special Congress delegate should uh, donate 100 rand per uh, each delegate and then it was uh, 200 rand per each uh, NUMSA staff member. Um, which we did as part of uh, trying to make sure that um, the Black Christmas that was confronting those families, we will meet them halfway. But coming back on the on the on what would, what what we see happening within that term, um, one government would have tried by all means to make sure that those who are in the executive are not held accountable. If you look at the Falam Commission you'll see that the Falam Commission was not necessarily uh, uh, intended to make sure that there is justice for these families, but it was a process to ensure that if there's a commission, everybody will hope that therefore the matter will be addressed, yet there will be an attempt to make sure that um, it's cover up for some people, and say um, there are people who have, who have not been held responsible. And I think if you look at Falam Commission, yeah, they ended up um, putting a blame solely on on, uh, on the then uh, police commissioner Piecha, um, and then others who were alleged to have uh, also influenced uh, the massacre were not uh, made accountable. I mean, there, there, there's been a consistent allegation against the president that he was also part to communicating. Uh, towards um, this uh, uh, attack of, of workers. In 10 years now, there's not been any arrest of anyone as we speak. Um, and we're, we're raising this being, uh, be, I mean, it's questionable because um, they, they, during that massacre, they, they were journalists present. Um, there was a capturing of that massacre by journalists and by um, all and, and, and other people possible, uh, so we will uh, we will see the videos uh, being even played in the media, in the social media, in different platforms on, on, of the media. But um, I mean, in our eyes, we would have expected that those videos and the information that has uh, surfaced, it will assist the the, the state 
uh, to make sure that um, it, it easily identify those who are perpetrators and then uh, at, the, at the end make those arrests. And up until today, you don't see any effort towards that. And again, there, there was also a, a promise by the president that he was going to be going there and meeting the workers there and meeting the families and widows. Up until to date, we have not seen the president doing that, um, uh, including uh, even his executive uh, at, the, at the government level, because we would have, as we would have expected them to, to actually do that. But however, they have not done that up until to date. So, so, so it is, it is worrying, and um, and and for us, is that um, there should now be a, a united front uh, toward make sure ensuring that we exit pressure against the state, uh, against the government, to make sure that there's something that is done. Because um, in situations like this, uh, we actually have to care less about our logos but be saying because where we are a union that that is said it's, a, it's revolutionary in its character we should be able to join forces with other unions which are organizing in the mining sector and agree on what action should be taken against the state so that at the end of the day there will be justice uh, that that is that that is prevailing uh, so that uh, at the end of the day uh, there is some sort of, some sense or some sort of uh, compensating the families. Uh, I mean, we we know that um, they will not be able to bring them back. All of those workers who perished in the picketing line, uh, just because they were demanding a living wage, um, and uh, but was saying uh, some form of a compensation will go a long way toward uh, assisting those families. And I think. Among other things, as Numsa, which we continue to have a problem with, um, even beyond the mining sector, is that whenever workers have got a dispute, which is a labor dispute between the employer and the employee, and, the, and they would have exhausted the negotiating table uh, processes, then they, 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 they go out having declared the dispute in accordance with the, with, with the law, we often find police be, uh, being at the front to brutalize our members in the picketing lines. We often find uh, police being unleashed against workers who picket peacefully in those roads in front of those companies. And our, our question has always been that why police are not um, uh, 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 impartial in, in ensuring that there is peace and then also protecting workers because workers, for the fact that they enter or they embark on the picketing lines, it does not mean that they are now thugs, but it means that they, they this is the only power or a weapon that they have to make sure that they put pressure against their, their intransigent employers to accede to their to their justifiable demand. Because it is these workers who produce whatever that is being produced in those uh, various uh, plants or various factories or in those mines. It is these workers who goes underground and, uh, and, 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 and work in, in producing those mineral resources. It is those workers who, 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 who produce the, the, the surplus value which is which is which is at the end of the day is enjoyed only by management and the 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 the, the owners of those companies through the dividends and um, uh, respectively through the performance bonuses and production bonuses whatever concept that they give and then but on the other side is that the same workers would have produced that surplus value are uh, are now isolated. They are now not uh, deserving. Uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the slice um, of, 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 of the bread out of their sweat, having produced that kind of a surplus value, and that is the kind of the neoliberal agenda that we continue to fight against. That is the kind of the bourgeoisie government 
that exist in South Africa that we continue to fight against. That is the kind of the global um, uh, capitalist system that we seek to to fight against here in in, in the country and with the, and then through joining forces with the international federations as well to try and make sure that we embark on the working class struggles that seeks to smash the capitalist um, agenda that continues to suppress and super exploit uh, our members across all sectors of our economy in this country and elsewhere. In the period that followed, the strong links between the mining sector and the state have remained. The operations in Marikana were taken over by Sibani Stillwater, which is one of the major global mining giants. To this day, workers at many mines continue to strike for basic necessities. What is the state of workers' rights in the sector today? Look, I think for, for decades, uh, the mining sector in, 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 in South Africa, uh, it, uh, I think one must accept that it is one of the key centers of the economy. Um, yet, it does not uh, play ad the, the adequate role in ensuring that there is much more intervention in terms of the development or supporting uh, the agenda towards a developmental state in our country. I mean, you the one of the things that we think we've got a problem with is the fact that uh, these minerals they belong to to the nation. But um, with the current uh, setup, is that individuals will come and uh, own those uh, mining companies, or, uh, and then at the end of the day, they will harm us uh, a lot of minerals out of out of our land, and then at the end of the day, the the big the big chunk of money is then reinvested outside the borders of South Africa. They are not uh, uh, ensuring that there is a beneficiation, for instance, out of those mineral resources so that there is a proper creation of jobs through the value chain. And so that uh, at the end of the day, they can be able to stimulate um, a, a demand and supply in terms of ensuring that at the end, at the end of the day, it boosts our economy through uh, uh, employment and uh, and provide the buying power for our own people to be able to consume whatever that is supposed to consume within the the, the value chain of the economy, and uh, and within that there's uh, there's there is a smooth um, uh, collaboration between the state and and the mining sector in this in this country. Hence, uh, hence the state security was unleashed and continues to be at the center in protecting uh, those individual business tycoons who are given right to to mine in our country and we think that uh, this is a, it is unfortunately that um the the kind of mineral resources that uh, should should be used to to develop our country should be used to create more jobs should be used in ensuring that we advance the agenda toward manufacturing in the country is not done. Yeah, we are being diverted mostly uh, to focus on the services sector, and we all know that the services sector does not um, have a capacity to absorb a, a bigger number of people into the employment. And that is why we would have, as NUMSA, consistently called for the nationalization of mines, called for the nationalization of the, C C M of the key sectors of the economy in this country, so that we are able to have a government that is developmental in character, the government that is it takes responsibility in, 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 in creating jobs, as opposed to, to a government that, that says, no, 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 we are going to rely on, on, on direct foreign investors. And for us, that foreign direct investors are not an answer into our misery, into our plight. The foreign investors is somebody who sits somewhere in his or her country uh, who might not even think about us. And therefore, we must use what we have in creating jobs, in making sure that we, pre we present an environment that is conducive for all uh, to be able to earn a decent living, to be able to make sure that uh, we've got a state that is able to provide uh, mostly uh, uh, the, the social needs or, um, for our own people. I mean, we are now a country that is mostly relying on grants, as we speak. 
And why must we why must we rejoice that it's the state is giving us grants? We can't rejoice because it it means that you must have society that is reliant on the state. We must have society that is stagnant, that is unable to develop. We must have society that is dominated by massive employment. We must have society that is experiencing the dipping levels of poverty. We must have society that continues to 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 experience the high level of inequality and uh, and in, in the process it produces uh, more criminals than than producing a responsible societal uh, in in our in our lifetime so the within that term um, they there's there is a lot that's supposed to be done in terms of transformation um, in the mining sector and in other key sectors of the economy um, and, and ensure that at the end of the day those mines they must actually work for society not for 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 the individual elite and mostly who are foreigners uh, for that matter the marikana massacre was a watershed for workers and trade unions in the country too as it spurred a fresh round of organizing numsa has been in the forefront of many militant protests by workers what are the demands of numsa in this sector look one is that uh, we 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 need more 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 improvement on the health and safety um of 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 workers in those mines we think that uh, it's one of the worrying factors uh, that you continue to be worried about you remember there were there were there, there are still workers who who are who where the one of the mines collapsed over them their bodies have not been found up until to date um and we continue experiencing a very complicated uh, process towards the the inquiries in the mines when as and when there are issues of health and safety um i mean uh, the companies they decide uh, that they are not going to be at the center in resolving or being party to those inquiries they 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 normally hire law firms to come and represent them and uh, us as unions who, with the with the limited resources we have will struggle to hire the expertise of those uh, lawyers to equate to be equal to the task against those uh, lawyers who, uh, who are representing minor, mining mining tycoons um, so meaning that there is not appetite to correct what's supposed to be corrected there is more willingness to to put a, a, a defense so that um, the status quo continues so it's one of the fundamental demands that we continue to to advance and um, the question of um, a, a, the living wage continues that struggle continues we are saying that uh, it cannot be that uh, the the uh, up until to date mine workers are not even earning 20000 as we speak um, I mean, it took it took their lives to demand twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, when we think that uh, they they would have understood what was the call for, or what was the demand about, up until to date, we are we're still embarking on a struggle to make sure that at least they reach about twenty thousand, um, uh, so that they can be able to look after themselves and be, and remember that these are migrant workers in most cases they come from different uh, uh, different provinces and others come even outside the borders of south africa like uh, like zimbabwe etc and therefore whilst they they spend more of their lives in the hostels they spend more of their lives in the in the in, in those mines but at the end of the day they must also look after their their families uh, who will be residing back in their in their in their path of in their provinces of birth or in their path or uh, path of I mean uh, countries of birth uh, respectively so which also that on its own puts more pressure on them because it means that you must be able to have a budget for for yourself where you are you must be able to have a budget for for your family back home but also remember that um, workers they they also pay what we call black tax because when we, with the with the 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 massive unemployment they will have their relatives extended families being unemployed and therefore with the little salaries or wages that they get they must still look after their aunties they still look they must still look after their grannies and and cousins and so forth 
and, and siblings and so forth. So therefore, we think that there is a need to continue with the struggle that workers must equally benefit out of the surplus value that they've produced in those mines. So we continue doing that. And there, there is also a need to transform the, mine, the, the mining chamber in this country, which is mostly dominated by wh white male who are detecting the terms and, uh, and, 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 and in doing that, it should also be uh, about how do we then enter into a partnership where a state will have a clear shareholding in those mines. Remember, these are mineral natural resources that uh, belongs to the country. So if the same mining companies are able to do it in, in our neighboring countries, why can't they do it in South Africa? Where, where 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 the government can have 50 to 60 percent shareholding in those mining companies so that they can be able to get the, get uh, the, the monies out of those mines uh, to boost the economy of our own country why can't we do it in south africa because it's being done in our neighboring countries so those are some of the demands that we continue to demand going forward <music>